Well, hello and welcome to another interview here on the ESC United channel. Today I am joined by an up-and-coming artist who actually first popped up on our radar during the Operacion Triunfo show in 2018, and now she is participating in Benny Dorm here in 2022. It is Marta Sango. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I I don't know how to say it, but I'm like always, you know, with my mm-hmm. tissue because it's very cold in Madrid and I have to practice my performance. So I'm in in my house, you know, chilling and working online. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm good. I feel you. Now, I'm sure it's not as cold here in the States as it is over in Madrid, but we uh, here in Oklahoma, we've had a lot of cold weather here as well. So I have also been not necessarily probably as like, you know, I guess cold ish, but I've been feeling that like nasal sinus congestion. It's beginning like, me too. Is, like it's not autumn. It's like officially winter. Mm-hmm. I feel you. And it's only going to get worse from here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, you know, obviously I gave a little bit of background on on you and I guess kind of your uh, trajectory, at least when it comes to kind of being in the Eurovision bubble. I know that there's a lot more to you than just kind of the Eurovision pre-selection. So why don't you give us kind of a brief introduction? Who is Marta Sango? Wow. I'm a young artist. Um, I'm a singer and an actress. And um, I started... In a, study music since nine years old. I started playing the electric guitar. Then I, um, uh, then I um, practiced like um, hip hop, flamenco. I, uh, I um, created, I, uh, I, um, I had an a cappella group because yes, okay. because I was in my in a choir in my village, so we made like a, an a cappella group with my friends who were in love with a cappella stuff. So I had the chance to practice to you know to practice my my ear my musical abilities, and and then. Um, it, it was then when I realized that I was very good at um, singing in that choir because all of the solos were for me. So it was like, ah, sorry, okay. Um, and then I enter a very famous reality show here in Spain, which is called Operación Triunfo. And in, in 2018, so it was like a moment of popularity here in Spain. So everyone knew who was Marta Sango. It was like a life-changing thing for me. Uh, suddenly I had like uh, 2,000 um, 2, followers on Instagram. I had like 600 and then I had like in two months, it was crazy. In this reality show, uh, I was with uh, more contestants and we were in a house in an academy, singing singing academy. And we weren't, um, we, we couldn't use our uh, smartphones. So we didn't know who, what was happening outside. So when we, um, when we, uh, when the reality finished, I, I mean, I was, I was like, I needed mental, uh, care, uh, you know, it was right. like a crazy thing. It was crazy, thing. but um, for me, it has been an, an amazing opportunity, full of um, yeah, full of opportunities. Like I, I, I started working in a theater, in a very very famous um, obra obra um, theater, um, you know. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you say that? Uh, it was like, I, and I, I know what you're speaking about. Um, it's like yeah, musical, it's musical theater. Thing. Yeah. There you go. I said, yeah, so uh, this reality brought me a lot of opportunities. Uh, I work with Los Javis, the, the Venenos writers. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I've spent two years 
current, I'm currently uh, um, working there. And I started me making music uh, since I was 18 years old. Now, now I'm 21. So I'm still like creating this Marta Sangos project, which is full of nostalgic sounds and and everything related to this. And and yeah, I'm 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 studying um, I'm studying music in in a very famous school here in Madrid. And yeah, and now I'm I'm I have presented this song for Eurovision, and apparently. I'm lucky to say that I'm one of the candidates. So yeah. uh, three years of changes uh, of me growing to become a woman, um, a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best to, to explain it in English, <laughs> but it's it's very crazy life that I have. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but very, very crazy. I'm very young. I've learned mm-hmm. so much in so little time um and and i have a lot of opportunities uh, and and yeah yeah well and i think that you hit on something that um i especially when you talk to people who have been on reality tv shows um and especially uh you know things like i, I guess you could like classify uh operation triunfo similar to like big brother where you are like very locked out of everything and then to add into that that you are also performing that you are randomly getting assigned numbers that you're working on throughout the entire week and then you have to go on stage and perform them in front of a studio audience and tv so i guess for you i mean because you kind of hit on this a little bit i guess what did you what what would you have said was like the most stressful part of being on that show everything everything was so stressful and I've always been like a very um, ex, 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 um, like very um, stubborn kid, mm-hmm. and I wanted everything to be perfect. So I didn't enjoy anything about the reality show. Um, I was like the youngest uh, contestant there. I was 18 years old, um, and and suddenly I was in that stage. Uh, a prime time in television it was like something that everyone was watching mm-hmm. and it was like my dream but the only thing that i that i have done was uh, singing in the in the church with my with my a cappella group in weddings and suddenly i was there it was like i was like this all the time but thanks to that now i'm like you know, it, it, it is very interesting to um, um, to aprender to ah, how can I forget this verb to to learn. It's very interesting to learn from these traumatic things, but it's the easiest and the and the quickest way to learn. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm 21 right now. I feel like I'm maybe 28. I don't know. <laughs> Well, stress does add a lot of years to to how you feel. Trust me, I've I've been through some things, and I'm like, I feel a lot older. But it's really just because I went through like three weeks of like, holy cow, did that just happen? And <laughs> it did. <laughs> well, and in thinking about, so let let's say hypothetically speaking, if you had entered Operation Triunfo now, do you think that you would have any ed- or well? Let me back this question up. If you were going to give some advice to Marta Sango from 2018, knowing what you know now, what advice would you maybe give to yourself or maybe even artists who are thinking of being, you know, on Operacion Triunfo in the future? Mm, I don't know, because I think I tried to live that experience the best way I could. But, uh, and, and for me, it's like, if someone uh, gives me the advice of hey, don't stress, it's like for me, it's, uh, I don't give a, you know, o sea, <laughs> I still, you know, I'm very stubborn, but um, I feel like if I enter a present room for right now, I would be very calm. Uh, I would leave that experience, experience in another way because uh, I think I needed to be like less, 
you know, when demanding, mm -hmm. you know, on me, I was very little, I, I didn't have experience and, and, and I, I, I wanted to, you know, to be the best and to be like perfect. And that was impossible. And for me, it, it was not an enjoyable experience. So um, I would give the, the advice to trust in myself and also focus on my um, good things, you know, my, the things that shine from Marta Stango. Um, but you know, it, it's like, I didn't change. I, 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 I didn't, no, I didn't know. I wouldn't change anything because <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was the experience and this experience taught me a lot of things. So, okay. Awesome. It was very traumatic. It was like, <laughs> I don't know if, if, if it is because I'm speaking in English and not in Spanish, but now I'm like, um, being more honest than normal. Okay. Well, we appreciate honesty on this channel. So you say what you want to say. You're completely fine. And I wanted I wanted to ask you, um, because obviously, you know, when uh, Operation Triunfo, I, I, I get the dates jumbled, but I believe it was the year prior uh, to your competition is when they started to use it as a selection for Eurovision again. Um, so you've gone through that with the possibility of going to Eurovision. Um, obviously didn't work out still finished eighth though so you still finished finished pretty good in the in the actual selection and then this opportunity comes around for benny dorm fest 2022 what yeah. made you decide that you wanted to have another go and try and you know put another song out maybe go to your vision mm, there is a, a huge difference between the two cases because the first one i was given a song um, and I was like isolated from the selection of songs. They like pointed at everyone and, and, you know, it was like the way that it had to be done, but uh, it was very different because now I have the chance to, um, to perform my project, my proposal, my, you know, my, my, yeah, I have the opportunity uh, to show the people who I am. And I have, I have had enough time to discover who I am. So now I'm like sure mm -hmm. to show people. And three or two years ago, when I was given this song, I, I was very thankful, but I wasn't comfortable, comfortable about this proposal. Mm -hmm. I couldn't uh, perform surely, you know, perform like comfortable in the stage. Uh, it was not something that I, I, um, I trusted in that moment. So I'm thankful for uh, not performing in that moment. And now I have the chance and it is because of my uh, decision and my song. And for me, that makes sense as an artist yeah. to be satis satisfied with, you know, to be uh, proud and be mm -hmm. satisfied. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a big difference in, in what you'd mentioned. There's a big difference between having a song written for you by someone mm -hmm. who just knows you kind of maybe surface level based off of the show. And then someone who has met with you, has sat down with you, has listened to your desires and has given you something that you believe in, which it sounds like that's kind of what we've got here now for Benny Dorm is something that you've been very invested in. And, yeah. and as you mentioned earlier, and I, I, I mean, I'm not a musician, I'm not a recording artist, but I come from the classical realm. And I mm -hmm. can tell those, you know, when you mentioned that you're really inspired or you really enjoy those retro sounds, I definitely hear them throughout both of your singles and then also your Benny Dorm song. Because that is something that I think really seem, seems to be kind of like the genre that you like. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess my big question for you is, kind of how did you how did you find that genre as kind of being the the genre that Marta loves so much? Um, I'm very emotional person, and there is an emotion that moves me 
from my inside, which is the nostalgia. For me, that is very powerful for my feelings, for everything. And that feeling, you know, inspire, inspires me a lot, the nostalgia. I think it's a mix between sadness and happiness and, you know, memories and, and past and future. I think nostalgia has a lot of weight, a lot of, uh, you know, power. Um, and for me, for an art, for me as an artist, is very important to uh, to be moved by this by energy an energy that I um, trust, you know. Like, and for me, it's nostalgia. And what brings me nostalgia? This type of sounds. I I'm always when I compose, when I'm composing, when I'm writing, I I'm always looking for that sound that breaks my heart just a little like like makes me think about my past and in in my childhood and how things could be better you know i try to to be sad when i'm composing i try to and you know in this in this uh, composing moment is when i discover my my sound and what is the sound that I am comfortable with? And it also helped me a lot when I was in Operación Triunfo, because when you are select, selected by the judge uh, in the perform of the week, when you are selected to leave the academy, you have the final um, chance, you have the, the last chance to show people who you are. So. Um, you are given the chance to choose the song you like, okay? Normally, you have to perform a, a song, but when you are pre proposed to leave the academy, you can choose your song. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was uh, like the most, uh, the contestant that was uh, proposed to leave the academy the, the most. So I have a lot of chances to choose a lot of songs. And I always chose like 80s. I didn't know why, but, and I started to realize that it was like the music I been listening to all my childhood and the music that, you know, I enjoyed. I obviously listened to Skrillex. I obviously listened to Estromae. I listened to a lot of music, but is this type of music that I, I you know, I feel, I feel like an artist. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it is. It is like this sound. I don't know. It's. It's. I don't know if if it's remind reminds me of the eight of the eighties, the seventies. I don't know. It's something that brings me nostalgia. It's something that brings me sadness. That this um, deepness, this no, this depth. You know this. Mm this sensation this i don't know yeah. i don't know it's difficult to explain in spanish imagine <laughs> in English. yeah well it sounds like it's it's something that like you know when you are thinking about creating music and you're producing something you don't want to just produce something to produce something you want to create something that has meaning that has story that has emotion and especially something that you also connect to beyond like and just not just your listeners connecting like it's a piece of you that you're putting in music did I get that right yeah yeah of course and then I think well uh, the first uh, sound that I felt like um it was something I liked a lot it was like the 80s universe mm -hmm. and I think the 80s has a lot of um you know sauce has a lot of um, revolutionary things such as fashion, such as music, everything for me is very interesting to explore in those colorful, um, you know, uh, references. For me, it's like it's like a gift for an artist to, you know, and and I feel very inspired. For example, with the eighties, and I think it's a very funny um, years. De decade it's a very very funny uh, very revolutionary and for me as an artist it helps me to to feel free to explore and to have that type of 
it's um, you know that type of philosophy yeah. no like in the 80s like let's be ourselves so for me it's it's inspiring yeah and, and i agree with you the um the 80s are definitely a, a period of kind of uh freedom of expression of, like you said revolution really just like not caring anymore just doing what you want to do and i can totally get as an artist where like you would draw inspiration from just being like you know what i'm just gonna do this now and i'm gonna do yeah. this now you know it it makes total sense to me like, uh, like where's neon like <laughs> And I, I have like a photo, a Madonna's outfit, which is like awful. But then I can see the beauty of it. Like, mm -hmm. look at this. Look at this. <laughs> that is perfect, like, perfect 80s she's fashion. She's wearing everything because <laughs> she, can, she can, she can, you know? Exactly, exactly. Well, and this leads me to, I think, a really um, important question that I really wanted to ask you, um, because, of course, we know that the Benny Dorm Fest is going to be a big live spectacle, live performances, there will be stagings involved and everything like that. So I guess kind of in your preparation and planning for everything, have you given some thought to what we might see on the Benny Dorm stage? Is there anything you can reveal without revealing too much? Uh, let, me the, let me put the question this way. Are we going to see 80s on stage? Well, I want to to offer like something. Um, how can I say? Not tem like a temporal. OK. So, so like not, not dated. Yeah, not dated. Like I want, I don't want to make it obvious. Like '80s girl, '90s girl, '70s girl. I don't know. Um, I want to take references and make it like not. Uh, how do you say? Uh, not. Not dated. Not dated. Like a classical thing, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I want to instead of uh, you know. Uh, a, a decade, you know, instead of representing a decade or something like that, I want to, you know, to connect with people. I am used to the drama thing and the interpretation, interpretation, you know, the acting. I'm, I'm yeah. used to that. I work there. I work in the theater. I, I'm used to, you know, uh, creating choreography for my for my songs, and I won't like to make that piece of of performance and that includes a lot of things such as acting, uh, dancing, uh, singing, um, you know, the, the screens, everything is perfect. My outfit is done from zero. Um, so I want like this concept to be perfect and to be like something something um just because of itself you know something not that reminds you of 70s mm -hmm. like a concept a concept for itself a concept yeah i got you i and got mates. you 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 want people to pick up that there are pieces of the 80s in there but it's like 80s in 2022 it's it's got your references if you know them but otherwise we're going to keep moving on yeah it's like a like give the people the chance to to understand what is happening in my mind and and, the, um, and to understand the way I the way I see this you know the way I I I um inter um, uh the way I feel my song the way I feel it has to be sung it has to be uh, you know performed. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very perfectionist person, so I'm sure the people will love my my proposal. And yeah, for me, it's like the most important thing is to connect with people. I think my song is very powerful because it's like the sound is very popular. It, it is something that communicates with easily with ease with ease. And and yeah, for me, like. 
the most important thing is to you know to go through this the tv screen and people yeah well and i have another question about your staging only just because i was watching the for, for research purposes clearly uh the music videos for por ti and que mas quieres de mi yeah there we go um and i noticed that there are two dancers that are in both videos and they're also in your promo images on Spotify and social media. So I'm wondering, are they going to make an appearance for Benny Dorm? Of course. Of course. <laughs> this is something I can say because they are part of my family and I want them to be with me like forever. Uh, each, of, each of my dancers has like a very strong personality and they are not the same between them. So it's like we complete like a beautiful perfect family um and and yeah they are going to be with me they help me with the choreography they they are they are in love with this project and for us it's like it's like it is it is like a, uh, it's like work because we what we have to perform but at the same time it's like a beautiful experience mm -hmm. and i think it's very important for an artist to be uh you know, next to always have these people around you and 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 don't change that much because I'm not a band, I'm not a group, I am a solo artist. So when it comes to touring, it comes to interviews, it's very easy to feel alone. So for me, it's like very cool to have my dancers, my family, my brothers with me. And yeah, I think it's like also a good thing for a solo uh, artist. Yeah, you have like your own little support system built in on stage. So even if you're like a little nervous, you got someone to kind of, you know, tap you on the back and be like, you got this, you got this. Yeah, and I also have like this feeling that they know me and they know how I uh, react to some situations. They know how I can calm down it is like a family. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I have one final question for you. Uh, we can kind of wrap up here. So um, in thinking about, you know, obviously the winner of Benny Dorm will go on to Eurovision to represent Spain. What would it mean to you as an artist to be able to go to Eurovision and represent your country? Wow. It wouldn't mean a lot of things. It would help me to to grow a lot of as, as an artist that is obvious um i have the chance to to develop my my personal um my my ah this is very difficult i have i, I can i can develop my my abilities my um artist and and my my abilities in the stage but i can also um learn how uh, to work under pressure, of course. And with this, um, uh, with this variety of sources, you know, that the big stage, like this crew you have behind you, uh, it's, it's like very, um, it's very intense for an artist, but it's very, you know, it's uh, un aprendizaje, it's something you learn a lot mm -hmm. and at the same time it would be like crazy for me to represent spain uh, for me revision is you know it's 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 uh it's an amazing festival and i'm very fan of eurovision it has i think it's it fits marta sango a lot it's like very pop very popular uh, thing and and i don't know it would be amazing for me um as i said several times it is very very difficult to answer this type of questions in english <laughs> but i'm trying my best it would be amazing it would be something i cannot describe with words um and i would do my very best to to be proud of myself which i think like is the most important thing because when an artist is proud of of itself it's like you can show people uh, and people can, you know, it's it, for people, it's like 
very easy to connect with you if you are proud, if you're mm -hmm. comfortable with who you are and with your work and how it's showing. Yeah. So for me, it's like be work, be proud, communicate and have fun. And, you know, uh, it's also very important to to make people, you know, proud of you because they are being represented by me. So um, I, I live this experience like as an artist, but also as, a, as a, you know, as these people who's watching television and expect expecting something to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of like, you know, you want to have fun and you want to have a great experience, but you also want to represent your country uh, and the people of your country. You also want to have this experience and this exposure. And so you, your vision just kind of puts a nice little bow on all of those and just brings it all together into one. Perfect. Oh. Of course, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Marta, for spending some time with us and helping us to get to know you a little bit more. Um, of course, to our viewers, if you would like to support Marta, the best thing that you can do is go and check out her music, check out her socials, watch the Benny Dorm Fest. Uh, you know, make sure that you vote if you are able to vote in Benny Dorm as well. And of course, if you'd like to support our channel here, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, so that way you know every single time we upload something down below. But until then, I will catch you all next time. See ya!